You always think you, you're going to become world champion one day when you're eight, nine years old. Still some days, um, walking to walk into my lounge, the trophies there, and still a bit surreal thinking that I won it. And you never really think it's going to happen until you actually get your hands on the trophy. Oh, it just, it meant everything to me. Absolutely everything. It was everything that I ever dreamed of and everything that I ever worked for. I was stamping the queue as well on the ground. I just didn't know what to do. Weirdly enough, I remember being really calm on that shot because it was a shot that I'd hit thousands upon thousands of times since being eight years of age, the shot to win the World Championships. To lift that trophy, as, as same as all the other great players in the, in the game, it's, uh, it's, it's an unbelievable feeling. It must be one of the best feelings. It's, it's what you've always dreamed of. I must have beat Steve Davis in the final of the World Championship a hundred thousand times <laughs> as a ten-year-old boy. He must have been sick of the sight of me, Steve. Practicing on that table, you're telling yourself, right, you're sort of talking yourself through, right, I'm Mark Selby and I'm playing against Jimmy White or you're playing against Stephen Hendry, telling yourself you're going to become world champion. But that's all you can do until you actually finally be able to do it. So I suppose you... If you think you're good enough, you have to believe you're going to be world champion one day. Also, it's pointless playing. Uh, whether you do or not is a different thing. I mean, it's definitely the hardest tournament to ever win over the two weeks, that's for sure. You know, we were just, uh, after being there for, it was our 17th day, we were playing on adrenaline towards the end of it. I mean, uh, um, you're still quite fresh in your mind playing there. It's just adrenaline keeps you going. Towards the end of my world championship win, it was for me, the, the visual impression that I had was sitting in my chair, literally wringing the sponge, asking for that little drop more all the time, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And that's what it was like. And, and it really is um, not only a, a battle of wills, really, with your opponent, it's actually the mind games that go on in your own mind and being able to overcome that, um, that is so challenging. I hit a wall, uh, start of the second session. Uh, it was four all and I went eight four down. Um, and I had everything I could possibly to get some sugar in me, Red Bull, chocolate, coffee, banana, to uh, try and get myself back in it. You start believing things are gonna happen. You know, you get on this crest of a wave, you're the young qualifier, you got to the final, everyone's saying you're gonna win, and now you're 10-6 behind and probably gonna lose. And it all felt a bit, Oh, this has all been for nothing. In that final, even though I was so far behind, I thought to myself, look, who knows, I may never get to a final again, so there's no way in the world I'm just going to lay down and just let Ronnie walk all over me and go on and win it. You're not thinking about the outcome, you're just trying to win that last frame. And uh, it was quite some time before we realised that we were involved in a bit of snooker history, and we never dreamt that 18 and a half million and probably a lot more that watched the television and in clubs where there was 60, 70, maybe 100 people watching. So who knows how many watched it. Um, if we had a thought that there was going to be that many people watching, we wouldn't have been able to hold the queue. Before winning the world title, you nearly jacked the game in, didn't you? And then he went back to Australia, is that right? Yeah, I did. I think um, uh, there was um, you know, a few times where I fell off the tour. Um, I think when I was like 16, 18, 20, I fell off the tour all of those years. I'd actually given up. I'd actually decided that that was going to be my last tournament. And um, we'd see where my life took me. I'd gone and inquired about getting a job selling cars at Mercedes-Benz in Sheffield. And the guy there had said, well, you know, we, we will start you out and see how you go. Get this snooker thing out of the way and come and start selling cars. Of course, what happened happened. And the next time I went in to see him, I went in to buy a car. Everything that I'd done up to that point was leading up to that point. And in my own mind, there was absolutely no way I was going to lose that match. For me, it, it's just sort of um, having a massive weight lifted off my shoulder winning the World Championship. And, and I've been able to sort of go out the, this whole season and just really relax and um, do what I probably should have done five, five years ago. So um, for me, winning that World Championship was just sort of a, a massive stepping stone and, and really been able to sort of kick on in my career now. Yeah, it was everything you always dreamed because, you know, you never really think it's going to happen until you actually get your hands on the trophy and, you know, when you're putting the winning balls. Oh, it just, it meant everything to me. Absolutely everything. It was everything that I ever dreamed of and everything that I ever worked for. Yeah, 
I was the lucky one that managed to knock the black in. When it disappeared into the pocket, I, I, it's hard to describe the feeling. In, I mean, I was stamping the cue on the ground. Oh, I raised the cue above my head, but I was stamping the cue as well on the ground. I just didn't know what to do. But well, you can see when you watch it back, you see the look on my face. I didn't have a clue what to do after, after that. I hadn't thought about what to do next. And then I obviously had to pot another ball and then another one and another one. And you can say, I look back now and think, you should have really enjoyed that a bit more. There wasn't, you know, I didn't crack a smile. I was just too, yeah, I didn't, I, I, I was overcome. I just, it was too much for me to cope with. Um, now I'd be giving it the fist now. I'd be giving it the come on and jumping around the table. But, you know, back then I didn't, I didn't know the ropes. I didn't know how to celebrate victory. I was absolutely buzzing. I was, uh, again, I had to pot the last red and the colours up, up to the blue. And when I came around to pot the blue, I'm, I'm bang on the blue. And the big chair, I knew, just knew then. And I saw Tony Drago. He's sitting in the, in the press box right behind you there. And uh, he was clapping like that. And he had a big smile on, my, on his face. He was so happy for me. And uh, that's when I smiled and looked up to my friends up in the uh, balcony and um, yeah, parted the blue on the pink and it was all over then and I gave Stephen a hug and, and uh, was just wanted to just get my hands on that trophy. It was fantastic. You know? I think now, when you think about it, I think back then you think it, it would happen again and again and again. That's what I was maybe thinking and it maybe didn't mean as much as when I was sitting talk to you right now about it. I'm just looking over above me. It's, the picture with when, when I did win it. Uh, yeah, it's incredible. It, it really is in, incredible that, that all the years and all the hours and you put the hard graft in and then it, it comes down to that final night and then for you to be standing in there with the trophy. I always remembered all the other great champions lifting it and when they lifted it up they always seen the like the, the little bulbs and the little bright lights that they were lifting the, the trophy up to. And then I can just remember looking up and seeing the, seeing the same bulbs that people like Steve Davis and Alex Higgins and Stephen Hendry have, have lifted up as well. And then for you to be one of them, uh, yeah, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to describe. It really is. It was one where I was able to enjoy myself. Um, normally when you're playing in that kind of atmosphere, you just, you don't really remember a lot that's going on. You're trying so hard, but, I was so in the zone that I could kind of take it all in. I had such a, a, a big lead that I was able just to sort of soak up the atmosphere. And that's probably another reason what made it so special. It, it was sort of, I was able to take everything in at the same time as, as knowing that whatever I'm going to do, I'm probably going to part. And is, is a feeling that probably not a lot of players have experienced in the World Championship final. It took me six months to really take it in, you know. Uh, I used to, uh, I'd stay in my mother's house there in Renlet in Dublin and um, she'd be shining in the cup every morning. It was, it used to sit on our television in the front room, you know, and people would be knocking on the door. Can we come in and get a picture? Yeah, yeah, come on in, you know, do you want a cup of tea? <laughs> and uh, every morning I'd get up, I'd come down the stairs, I'd go into the living room before I go down for breakfast. I'd pick it up, give it a big kiss and put it back on the TV. <laughs> and for six months, uh, you know, I was at the opening of an envelope at that cup everywhere. I remember a few days later having a dream that I'd, you know, I'd got to the final and, and um, not won the championship. And I remember waking from the dream, being very disappointed because I felt as if I'd imagined the whole last few days. I got a drink from the kitchen and came through the lounge and there was the trophy. It took a long time for it to sink in what winning the world championship means. Everyone thinks they know you, you know. So you went from complete anonymity um, to being known by a lot of people. That, and that took some getting used to. That was, you know, that was very, very strange. Yeah, I think at, at the time you don't realise how, how big it is. But looking back and looking, at, like you say, at the history of the game, um, growing up as a kid, always wanted to be world champion, world number one. To, uh, to finally do it sort of out of the blue, say 20 years as a pro, say to lift that trophy as, as same as all the other great players in the, in the game, it's, uh, it's, it's an unbelievable feeling. Amazing memories. Um, and um, I think that's what keeps me going now. Just, just the thought of how special it actually was winning it. You can always sort of dream, dream of, of what's going to happen, but that feeling that I had um, when I was potting the winning balls is it's like no other feeling I've ever experienced in snooker so it's something that's going to spur me on every single year it just meant so it was just a special moment to save my life 
uh, you, you look back and people say, obviously, your, your kids are being born or, or your wedding day. Uh, that, that, for me, that, that definitely goes up there in, in the top five of all that. I still love my snooker as much now as I did when I first started out. So as, as long as that carries on, obviously, I'll still be still be working as hard as Heather. Uh, the biggest thing for me is the enjoyment. Even if you're competing at the top of the game, but you're not enjoying it, that would be the time for me to probably put my gear away. But why I'm enjoying it, still competing, still staying positive, knowing I've got chances of winning tournaments, any, to any tournament to play in, I'm still going to be working hard and giving myself the best chance. What gets me out of bed is, is trying to get to the top of the rankings. And, and also, you know, there's a very, very small group of people who've won the World Championships. And there's an even smaller group who've, of people who've won it more than once and you know I've had two shots at adding to my collection in 09 and 15 and um, you know in the form that I've shown this season and in the work that I know I've been putting in you know I know I'll get to the crucible if we're lucky enough to play there this year at some stage I'll get there ready and I'll be trying as hard as anyone to take that trophy back to Dublin. I've won everything else in the game and I've won them multiple times. The um, you know, last two seasons I've won six major tournaments. Uh, you know, so kind of winning another world title is like the last thing on the list to kind of really sort of, I think, maybe really elevate my myself, my, uh, maybe my status in the game even further than what it is. So I think uh, I think being an overseas player is probably up there already. Uh, no one else has done what I've done in the game coming from overseas. And, um, but winning a second world title would be amazing. Um, I think last year, you know, I came really close to, to playing in the final with Judd, which would have been amazing. Um, and then this year again, we were the two, two form players going in. Um, you know, Judd obviously having an absolutely incredible season, um, but I wasn't too far behind either. I mean, someone, someone mentioned to me, uh, if, if you could win it again, anytime soon, obviously it would have to be maybe soon the next year or two, who knows, it'd be the, the fourth decade that, that would have won a world title and now you, it's incredible when you think about the, the 90s, the noughties, the, the 10s and then obviously you'd love to do it in the 20s, it would be an incredible achievement but obviously time was running out for the likes of myself to, to try and do it but it won't be for the want to try and obviously I'll still be trying my hardest and as I say, who knows what's going to happen, who knows when I'll be back there playing. I want to win it multiple times um, and in a style that people remember um, and yeah, I don't, I don't want to win it by the odd frame, end up fluking it. I want to be pummeling people into the, into the ground, into submission, and beating people with sessions to spare.